The first time I got to know you was during a workshop back in 2017, but I've seen you before, sometimes just a glimpse, and on rare cases I catch myself staring, even though I shouldn't, consistently trying to make it work with others, but it never clicked in my opinion. Insomnies on the thought of never seeing you again, or looking at you for the rest of my life. The things we're still about to experience, and the ones we're lucky we didn't. I always had you on my mind, even as a kid, and I'm grateful that I found you. You're a blessing, my soulmate. You made me a better person and even help me grow as an artist. So even though you're toxic as hell and slowly killing me from the inside, this one's for you. Spray paint is in my opinion the superior method of painting. My goal with this film is to educate the masses of its dangers, its stigmas, and how to use this tool to its fullest potential so you wouldn't have to experiment for years and waste all that cash. In the studio or in the field, cans should be treated with great respect for they have built many careers including mine. So let me teach you about this 100-year-old incredible medium. Spray paint has gained my preference for multiple reasons, but these are just some of the opinions why I use them. It's affordable compared to acrylic or oil paints. It's ease of use, you just press and point. It's smooth and sterile like finish, so no marks, no brush strokes, stripes or any other demonic junk. The many options you have in color, although you're able to mix and infinite amount of colors with acrylics or oils. It's hard to get that exact color you want and good luck restoring it when damages occur. Cans also tend to dry way faster than other paints, which is ideal for impatient people like me. I ain't got no time for that. They're lightweight and easy to transport whenever you're working in the field. Also, cans are more versatile than other paints. I've used them on cars, walls, furniture, and musical instruments, to name a few. But keep in mind, all these points are only valid whenever you get your cans from an art supply store or a graffiti store. In general, most spray paint brands from hardware or discount stores do the exact opposite. Whenever you purchase your cans from an art supply store, you should take off the protection and the cap. Why, you'd ask? Well, because it's taking up a lot of space in your backpack. And I'm only able to fit 23 in there. Luckily, this hasn't happened to me, but I dread the day one of the cans starts leaking in my bag, ruining everything I own. 
and wasting a lot of precious paint. So take them off. When storing your cans, keep in mind that there's a straw or so-called dip tube inside of the can and water seeks its own level. The same goes for pigment in a can. Imagine this. You keep them upright, all the pigment sinks to the bottom and crawls into the straw. Then the next time you shake it, the pigment won't mix in the tube, therefore clogging your can. So, whenever you store them for a longer period, Keep them sideways. Even better would be upside down, but then I won't be able to read the label, so sideways it is. There's nothing more satisfying than the sound of cans. The caps, the paint, and the steel or glass marble inside. But whenever you shake your cans, Remember the orientation your can was stored in. If you had it laying flat, shake up and down. If you had it upright, shake it sideways. Shake, shake, shake till you're able to afford a cheap drill from the thrift store and build yourself one of these. I've seen a lot of people use reciprocating saws, but those make a lot of noise, and I'd like to hear my sweet jams while I'm working. There are many different caps and accessories to use with spray cans. Learning how to use and to differentiate the one from another is something you'll discover and learn along the years of doing art. But this is the most important one. The difference between skinny and fat caps. Lexi, you get this stem with this slot in there. The wider the slot, the wider your line will be. This is a soft smooth cap. This is a medium cap. This is a pink dot fat cap. And this is a level 5 cap. You'll learn the color codes along the way. Now when you actually start painting, please consider the speed and distance. You might want to experiment this a little before you create your masterpiece. Because drips are a no-go. Drips are forbidden. I did do them before, but now they just look amateuristic to me. Keep in mind, the closer you get to your canvas, the quicker you need to move your can. Also, the closer you get, the thinner your line will be. Go slow with a greater distance, and fast whenever you're up close. And I repeat, no drips. Before you paint, you should pre-treat your canvas properly. Sand, degrease and primer, in that order. Then paint in multiple thin layers in all directions. Vertical, horizontal and both diagonal ways. The first layer is for coverage and the second one for texture to prevent these kinds of stripes to be shown afterwards. All paintings should be treated with a two-layer clear coat. Don't bother with murals. Murals are something different. As mentioned before, spray paint is extremely toxic upon touch and inhalation and will slowly kill you if you fail to follow these steps. Ventilate your workspace. When you're outside, you're all good, but I have this tent inside my workspace for multiple reasons. To prevent dust from contaminating my work, 
and so I wouldn't have to run outside every 10 minutes. And by using one fan at the entrance of the tent, and one fan near the window, pointing outside, I can keep working inside. I will improve this setup uh, when the budget calls for it. Protect your skin. Make sure to use gloves whenever painting, so you wouldn't have to wash your hands as often. The paint is still toxic upon touch with your skin. And yes, I'm a sinner. Sometimes I forget to wear gloves. Don't be like me. Go through your wardrobe and pick some clothing which sole purpose from now on will be to be worn during painting. Because spray paint does not come off. And trust me, I've ruined a lot of my gear and clothing because of this medium. Do yourself a favor and wear dedicated work clothing. Spray paint fumes may cause various illnesses on the long run, so I wear my mask as often as possible, even outdoors. Start out with the cheap ones, and eventually you'd like to get yourself one of these bigger and cooler looking ones. By the time I upload this film, I may have forgotten to mention some things. But I'll leave those for another one. Please make the right choices. I trust you to know the difference between good and evil when it comes to the use of this given advice. Although I'm not your father, so do whatever you desire. But at least you know how to respect the medium. Now go out there and make the world a better place for all of us.